Hi everybody, good night. Uh, it's kind of late, but I figured we'd do a, um, just some encouragement for sharpening, sharpening and edifying people. Um, so all are welcome. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Okay. Um, the purpose of this video is really to, um, the encouragement, um, why we should be encouraged in our afflictions, why we just see the enemy as a tool of refinement, correction, and even an uplifting, a sharpening, and edifying for all that gets burnt on the altar, for all that gets burnt on the altar, gets resurrected. For those who Sow in, in tears, reap in joy. And these are the promises we have with our Creator. These are the promises Christ gave us. And this is what we hold on to. This is why we carry our cross and follow Jesus. This is the light of the cross that goes beyond the wood of the cross. So what does that mean, the light of the cross that goes beyond the wood of the cross? Because when we really are faithful, when we really understand the revelation and promises of God and know that He is faithful and true, ever so graceful, and we know that His promises are real, that in our afflictions and trials and tribulations, they become blessings. That they'll be just as a dream that, that he wipes away all of our tears. And when we truly understand that in our hearts, truly believe that in our hearts, in a spiritual sense, so to speak, we, we laugh at our enemies. We laugh at our afflictions because it's our spiritual selves that will be resurrected and that will be forever. This tabernacle is just temporary. This tabernacle in the flesh, this, this world, this life, this plane of existence is just temporal. It's a test and a trying, a battle for your soul, for you must hold on to it. And how do we hold on to it? Through the word of God, by faith. And it's not about perceiving details and bickering and complaining and, and contending about this and that and, and being all scholarly. It's, it's about receiving in your heart what you really can't put into words. It's spiritual. And the truth must come forth to whomever souls can receive. And, but all of our souls can receive the truth. All of our souls can receive the truth. So we just soak, soak in that truth, soak in the light. Understand that our sin nature, the contention and all this stuff, we put it aside. Let your spirit take control. truth doesn't come in, in words or in eloquent art of words. It comes in the spiritual warming of the heart. It doesn't need to be explained. It doesn't need to be debated. It doesn't need the details don't have to be perfect but because we're to know nothing as we ought to. All of us are to come into the kingdom of God as a child. So when we're learning something new and everything to us is new, that's the way it ought to be. When people are contending about, well, you got this detail wrong and, and this and that and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It's not the point. 
You know you have the truth in your heart. You know when the truth, when, when, when you see God is with, when is on that truth, the miracles and and only God can be with that. Because the truth penetrates our hearts. It doesn't contend in details. And because we are all like a child. So in this video, I just want to give some encouragement. And we're going to talk about learning to rejoice in our afflictions. Why? How can we rejoice in, how can you rejoice in an affliction? It's all about understanding his promises. All right. So let's take a look here. Okay, guys. So in this video, we're going to be in Psalm 126. I'm in the NRSV, this is what I've been reading, or, or I don't know, I, I jump around, but um, we're in the NRSV. Uh, I wonder if I could actually make this larger for you guys. Bear with me a minute. Okay, is that better? So Psalm 126, if you don't have your Bibles open, let's break open Psalm 126. And let's let this be an encouragement. I'll try not to take up too much of your time. So for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. This is a very profound statement here. Very profound. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Okay, so why will we be like those who dream when the Lord finally restores the fortunes of Zion? When, when the kingdom comes, when everything that was is burning at the altar right now and in this valley in this life of the valley of tears when when God when God finally all those tears that we have sown when God finally restores everything that we've lost will be like those who dream because he wipes away all of our tears our afflictions are going to be like a dream these are his promises that are true and right and then our mouth will be filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy you see there's a story in the hypnosis of the archons from the Nag Hammadi library for example our mother our patriarch Eve the devil was so jealous of Adam and Eve in their glorified bodies that they seized Eve and they defiled her glorified bodies And the scripture tells a story. She laughed and became a tree and left for them an empty shell of herself. Now, in the natural, I don't think Eve left when she was being defiled. But surely we could see the prophetic amplifications because Eve in, um, was in her fullness of fullness of light and mind fullness was the the fall had didn't even happen yet she was smarter than her own creators she was right she had the revelation of male and female so when they defiled her she laughed and became a tree and she became a tree because she became a tree of insight, knowing that this life, this body, is just a shadow and just a vapor of the spiritual, eternal things to come that are forever. And what gets crucified, what gets burnt on the altar, gets resurrected. What the enemy steals has to be repaid sevenfold. 
so we could perfectly make sense while, while the devil seized Eve and defiled her body she laughed and became a tree a tree of insight you know look at Psalm 1 and she just left for them an empty shell of herself so let's continue reading and, and, and we can understand that then it was said among the nations the Lord has been has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced the treasures of heaven will be opened the promises of God will be fulfilled restore our fortunes O Lord like the water course in the Gib well, pretty much the water courses of southern Judah but may those who sow in tears reap in joy okay those who go weeping bearing the seed of sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves these are the promises of our Creator who is faithful and true and just this is why we in a spiritual sense laugh at our enemies this is why this is God's laughter at the enemy you see the laugh the enemy laughs at us as, as we are trodden down and and left to die thinking that we are punished in the sight of men but but when the res when the resurrection comes when the visitation of the Lord comes when judgment finally comes in the last days we will be like sparks running to and fro among the stubble and anything of not of God will dissolve anything of God that is holy and pure will be resurrected in eternal light and the wicked cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous the wicked cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous those of you who are afflicted you reap jump with joy for great is your reward in heaven may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves when the devil defiled Eve's body she laughed and became a tree and just left for her, them an empty shell of herself for she resurrected eternally forever you see the devil's this this world is the devil's lot this life is the devil's lot licking the dust of the earth crawling on his belly what does that mean to lick the dust of the earth he just licks the licks our sin nature comes after our sin nature crawling on his belly our belly is just our satisfaction in this world our the fatness of our world but I tell you you crawl because this world can't satisfy you this world is meant to be crucified this world is meant to serve God this world is meant to have light shine in the darkness that few people find it this is why the devil crawls on the satisfaction of the fatness of his belly because you can't be satisfied this world can't satisfy you so rejoice saints rejoice those who have gone astray repent come into the fullness of the Lord because I tell you these words last forever for the heathen will say the Lord has done great things for them and we will say the Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced 
but the wicked will be ashamed. Hang on to these promises. When they revile you, when they persecute you, when they kill you, even thinking that they're doing God justice, I tell you the truth. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Oh yes, I tell you, when the Lord restores the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. You see, the Apostle John, in the apocryphal acts of the Apostle John, all the apostles got crushed and, and, and he wrote about how Jesus taught him when you're not suffering and you're suffering anymore you have received the light of the cross. All of us can receive that. I mean yes we all have different souls some are old, some are young and the older souls are meant to suffer for the younger souls but all the souls can receive the truth and all the souls can go higher waiting on the redemption. All we have to do is ponder and and thirst for the knowledge of God in our hearts. It's not it's not a contest. It's not it's not we just have to want it. Cause his promises are true and his promises are coming. So I just want to pray if you are afflicted. Okay, let, let your soul. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that that the souls receive the truth. Don't let man tell you what it is. Don't go on me. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in all truth. And the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. The true Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus. For anything not of God will dissolve. Everything will return to its spiritual purest root. That is the end game. Remember guys, be received as a burnt offering. For our trials we shout for joy because what the enemy has stolen has to repay sevenfold. And the Holy Spirit is faithful and true to be with us in our trials. We never do it alone. If you honor and guard God, He honors and guards you. If you honor his word, his biblical principles, if you honor the truth, if you're willing to be a very small light in a very dark place, well, I tell you, much, the smallest amount of light dissolves much darkness. You guard him, he will guard you. I pray this was a blessing. I thank you for tuning in. Have a good night.